Welcome to the stream, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Iggy Kid on Twitch.tv. And now, introducing your host, from the 16-bit afterlife, weighing in at 273 kilobytes, assisted by the hands and voice of her mortal vessel, Iggy Kid. They are the ghost in the machine, the electric specter, El Fantasma de la Electriciedad, Lee O. Oh. There we go. Hockey wasn't working. What's up with that? Hold on, let me. Oh, I was hitting the wrong hockey. Whoops. That's my bad. <laughs> I ain't streamed regularly in a bit, so kind of out of practice. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, I messed up and forgot to uh, forgot to charge my N64 controller, so we're going to be using the standard Switch. Uh, what is this? PDP controller. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Oh, here we go. I wonder what Mario is doing right now. I wonder if he's helped. I'm so worried about him. He'll be alright, princess. Why are you saving some star spirits right now? Yes, you're right, Twink. I must be strong. I need to concentrate on finding a way out of here. But there are tons of guards just beyond your door, and it's impossible for you to escape through a window. Oh, wait a minute. I remember the minister telling me that there was a secret passage out of this room. Twink, help me look for it. Cool, where is he? All right. Here we go. Yeah, I said on my Discord, uh, it's been kind of, it's been a rough few weeks, so I kind of skipped last week. But I'm feeling, you know, I'm, I'm getting through it. Um, what do we got in here? Get powdered up. Got a powder my nose. Ah, a photo of Mario. Don't look at that. Oh, no. This is no time to sleep. Yeah, let's keep looking. Beautiful flowers, aren't they? They smell so good. Sure, I guess. I don't have a nose. Not that you really, so I don't even I don't know what we're talking about. Hmm. And we got... Oh, boop, 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 boop. Oh. The fireplace, quite nice. So big. It's so warm. Hmm, a warm fireplace? Don't you feel that suspicious? Do you really think so, Twink? That's... That isn't suspicious, but okay. Oh, look! There's some behind his drawing! It's fun. Is it so high up? Who put that there? Bad choice. Yeah, cool! Now we can get out of this room. Help remember all the voices I gave everybody. Probably should have watched back to the last stream. Oh well. But yeah, my plan is to go back to doing it at least weekly, but you know, if I don't feel like it, I'm not gonna force myself, because that's just not gonna be fun to watch or to do, so gonna make sure that I'm I'm feeling in the mood to go what are we was that twink oh are we oh yeah hey look at this it looks like somebody left a private diary just lying around should we read it only a little oh you like to this sort of thing do you tsk, tsk. okay then very quietly Let's see. Today is the month sunny. Today I went to Star Haven and stole a star rod. Now I'm invincible. Cool. I also captured those seven star spirits. So they won't annoy me anymore. It was a hard day's work and I'm feeling pretty bushed. Dinner was nice, but a bit bland. I feel like I might know the person who wrote this. Should we read more? Only a little more. Okay, let's continue. Today is cloudy then sunny. 
Say it was great, Diary. I used my castle to lift Princess Peach's castle way up into the sky. Then I barged into Peach's castle and beat up Mario. Yeah. Unbelievable, I know. So fun. And there's more. After that, I kidnapped Princess Peach. I should could be up your diary. I hope she likes me. <laughs> Princess Peach, this is Bowser's diary. Ugh. What would we do? Should we read more? Yeah. Sunny. Well, the Koopa Bros got beat by Mario Diary. He even set free a stupid star spirit I kept there. So mad I could barely write. Oh, I'm Mario. I'm so big and strong and good and helpful. I hate it, but I'm not worried. There's no way Mario could save the star spirit being held in dry, dry ruins. To do that, he'd have to solve the mystery of the sands and find dry, dry ruins in dry, dry desert. How would he even know to go to the desert anyway? So I'm not worried at all. In fact, I'm so calm, I'm gonna go to bed now. Dry Dry Ruins is the middle of the Dry Dry Desert. I want to reveal the Star Spirits is being held there. Twink, do you think you can find Mario and tell him that? Yes, of course, Princess Peach. I'll find Mario right away. Whoa. Oh no. I can't believe I left my secret diary lying out. It would be so embarrassing if somebody read that thing. What? What's the princess doing here? Ah, you little sneak! You read my diary. King Bowser, is your problem? You're the worst cards ever. Take Princess Peach back to her room immediately. Yes, sir. Straight away. Forgive us, sir. No, put me down. I was getting a little Arnold there. No. My Arnold isn't great. And even if that was accurate to that, that's not even accurate to what uh, Arnold sounds like. So, yeah. Mario, I believe you'll save us. Oh, no. What did I? Mario, I believe you'll save us all. From the bottom of my heart, I appreciate all you've done. Thank you. Since you have freed me from my prison, the seal on my power is broken. I will recover it little by little. As long as an ounce of power remains in me, I shall help you. Mario can now use the Star Spirit's power in battle. Using a star power requires star energy. Would you like to listen while I tell you how to use star powers and star energy? No. I suggest that you listen. It's very important. Do you want to listen? Oh, uh, no. All right, if you say so. Go in my pocket, old man. Mario, listen carefully. You must save the other star spirits quickly. The seven of us come together, we'll be able to bestow upon you a star power called the Star Beam. The Star Beam is the only thing that can counteract the star rod that Bowser wields. I have to go back now. Back to Star Haven. I must leave immediately, but I'll always be watching you. Save us all, Mario. Bye. Yeah, exactly. Cause that like uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger thing is like um, who was it? Will Sasso, who was on Mad TV, and he played Curly in a in a The Three Stooges like 2011 movie. Um, he was also on uh, he was the guy who would always do the lemon thing, where he would like spit up a lemon. In a uh, on Vine, but yeah, that was his like impression of Arnold Schwarzenegger from Mad TV, and so people think about that. And Arnold Schwarzenegger does make that noise sometimes. You know, he's like in Total Recall, he does that, and in the beginning of Conan, he does that. But like for the most part, he that's not what he actually sounds like. It's more like Hello, I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. Go, I do this thing, which is, you know, the way it's... It's just Austrian. I don't know. Austrian. It's, it's a bit easier for me to do the Austrian accent when I'm not trying to do, a, you know, an impression of anyone. It's not quite what I want to do, but it's, you know, sort of that. It's I'm not as practiced in the Austrian either. It kind of slips into Russian quite a bit when I do it. I've been working on my German accent, at least my more, you know, sort of traditional German accent. 
Whereas if I wanted to do sort of a more satchel organic accent, I would do, uh... I would do, like, Christoph Waltz. Who's, uh... You, people know from Quentin Tarantino's films. Um... And, yeah, his thing is he has a little bit of an accent, but he just kind of sounds like he's from the Midwest. Which, from what I hear, is pretty common among, you know, current German speakers. So, that's, that's how I handle that one. Get him! This isn't so bad. For this game, it's not too tough to have the, uh, not have the, the N64 controller, but it is less convenient. It doesn't feel as comfortable. So, probably at the first break, I'll, uh, I'll go check on that, see how, how it's, uh, come together. How it's charged up. What else has been going on? Oh, yeah, um... Kagoosh. <coughs> Today was the release of the new Lorcana set. Lorcana set 3 Into the Inklands, which is visually my favorite. I think it looks pretty sweet. Um, and it's got some good stuff. It's got this new, like, Jafar where he... Uh, the points that you use to win the game, you need 20 of them, are called lore. And he gets a lore every time you draw a card. So, that's, yeah, that's pretty OP. And if you use, say, like, because he's a purple card, um, the purples, Amethyst, are... Uh, have a ton of, like, draw abilities. So if you build a draw deck around him... Or, like, there's the Whole New World song card. And if you play that, you get rid of your entire hand and draw seven cards. And so that's seven of the 20 lore that you need to win. Yeah, from the American Midwest. A lot of people there were German or Scandinavian. You know, that's a lot of the Minnesota, and it's kind of, you know, it's a sort of Scandinavian thing that they've got going on. How powerful is drawing in Lorcana? Uh, it's usually pretty good. The meta for the second set was red, which is very aggressive. And I need to eat a mushroom. Uh, red, which was really aggressive. And was like a lot of like, uh, like th hitting car, like destroying cards or like putting cards back into hands. Um, and purple is the one where it's, like, a ton of draw. And so, yeah, people would always do those decks. And with this Jafar card, it's become even more powerful if you get that. Though, as a legendary, which is, like, there's, um, there's six levels of rarity. There's common, uncommon, rare, super rare, and then legendary. Uh, and those are all of the ones that are, like, a difference in the play material and then there's the sixth set which is enchanted which are like the secret rare alternate art like collector items but they are just mechanically identical to uh, a legendary usually or a rare so they're not they're just there for people who are collecting they look gorgeous but you, know, you don't need them um, so yeah, that Jafar is a legendary, so he's hard to get. I was there, uh, there was a midnight release last night, and I was hanging out with people while they were opening their uh, booster boxes, and at least one person got that Jafar. Someone else got a um, John Silver, Long John Silver from uh, Treasure Planet. And his thing is, what was it? It was like, he gets, like, one resist, which is, like, one less damage anytime he gets attacked, and an extra lore per quest uh, for every location and character. For every character at a location, I think it is. Locations are a new card. Um, 
And so that's super broken. That's gonna be like way too OP. Uh. But yeah, I. I've drawn. Let's see. I got like six packs last night. I got. Uh, two starter decks, and the starter decks each come with a pack. So that's pretty good. Uh, let me. Uh, which one's. There's the. Yeah, exactly. Though the Muppets are owned, there's no Muppet cards yet, but they are owned by Disney, so... We could get Muppet cards in the future. That would be fun. Uh, one of the big things with this set is that they're introducing show characters. So they got Tailspin, they got uh, DuckTales, the new DuckTales, so there's Alina, Saberwing. Um, and it's the new, you know, Webby and Louie and Dewey and Huey, all that. Uh, and that art style. Um, what was it? Uh, Tailspin and... It Tailspin, DuckTales... There's another one, I think. I don't remember. There's more love for the rescuers this time around. They finally have a card for Miss Bianca and Bernard. Um, they're both commons, but that's fine. Uh, there's one for Orville, which is... I love when the flavor text references, like, the, uh, the Lorcana lore. So, like, the Orvilles is just like, Eh, is that one of those, uh, ink reliquary flyers? I wish I could fly one of those. And it's like, yeah, very natural. Good job. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of Tangled and Hercules cards, but not the shows yet. Hades, there's some really good Hades cards. Uh, if you want to see something really cursed, look up Hades, King of Olympus. That card is has some really cursed artwork. Oh, this is just the to I meant to go to the store. Excuse me. Um... And yeah, each starter deck comes with a pack, and then I got four more packs, so I've opened basically half a booster's box, and I was able to find a booster box for, like, about five bucks a pack. But that's- the shipping is gonna be a while, so I probably won't get it for another couple weeks, but that's okay. Probably everything that they had in store is gonna sell out. One of the stores wouldn't even sell packs, they were just doing pre-orders or starter boxes. Um, which I pre-ordered my store boxes. Uh, I should buy... Right. That's how it works in this game. Let's get that. Um. Okay. Uh... I'm just gonna buy some stuff. I just got a thing for my roommate about plans. Um, and yeah, I, I've pulled a Legendary Maleficent, which is pretty good. I pulled, there's a Grandma Tala from Moana, a uh, Legendary that I pulled. And she, people are pretty excited about her, so that's a good pull. The one I'm most excited about is I got the new Chernabog card, which Chernabog, there is an Enchanted, which I desperately want, but I didn't get that. He's just a super rare. But his thing is that he's a 10-drop, 9-9, nine, nine, with three quest, right? Or three lore, right? Yeah. All right. No, that one. Yes. Do I have room for more stuff? I think I could get another five flower. Okay, I'm out of room. Um... So, but here's the thing. So that's already a very powerful card, but he's very expensive. Getting 10 ink out is pretty tricky. But he has two abilities. The first ability is uh, when he, what was it? Uh, he costs one less for every character that you have in your discard. So that's great. And... When you play him, 
all of the characters that are in your discard get shuffled back into your deck. Which is pretty great. So that one is... To me, that sounds very exciting. I'm super stoked to uh, play around with that one. Very, very happy I got that one. I still want that Jafar because I feel like he's going to be very useful. So tomorrow is uh, the weekly tournament. Everybody's probably going to be using starter decks, more or less. I'm basically just going to do the DuckTales Moana starter deck with uh and just throw the chernabog in it or no that's not the one it's the um the uh, 101 dalmatians peter pan deck this time is the one that it could go in that's right um let's see if i can take them out pop up and yeah, I'll basically just toss him in that, because right now it's a 60 card minimum for a deck, but there's no maximum. Granted, you don't really want to do much more than 60. Also, speaking of the, uh, speaking of the 101 Dalmatians, there's a thing now where it's got several of the named Dalmatians, right? As cards, and they have different abilities. They have a generic one called, uh, Puppy. Tailwagger, uh, which is a pretty basic card. It's like a two drop, right? And it's interesting because there's, it's all considered number four in the set, but there's like four variations. So it's 4A, 4B, 4C, etc. Uh, but its ability is, um, oh, I don't like that. yeah, everybody's been talking about that. That Yu-Gi-Oh story with the like casket of a friggin' deck. Yeah, the the general rule that people are going off of, it's not an official rule. Um, how do I like this? Yes. It's not an official rule, but the base the the etiquette rule is you need to be able to shuffle the deck by yourself with just your hands. And yeah, that's that's fair. <laughs> Um, but the, uh, yeah, the, normally you can only have four copies of the same card in your deck, right? Standard. Yes, it's the, you need to be able to shuffle it. Um, but yeah, it, normally in Lorcana, the deck has, uh, you can have at most four of the same card in your deck. However, the Tailwagger cards, these puppies, you can have 99 copies of them in your deck. That's their ability. So, you can, yeah, you can basically just make a deck that's about 100 cards. That's all these guys. And they're inkable, so you would just keep, like, slapping them out and using them to summon other guys. It's very silly. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, well, I believe magic is also three. I don't know why they went four. And the reality is most of the time I don't want to put more than three unless it's like a super cheap card. Because one of the things in Lorcana is that uh, it has shift cards, which I think were a new thing in the last set. And the idea with that is that it's like a higher cost card, but if you already have a card with the same name out. So, like, in this case, the, the evil queen from Snow White, she's just called the queen. So, if you have uh, the queen out, which there's some that are just one drop, uh, you can play an the queen that has a shift. Um, it's like, it'll normally be five, but it's like shift three, so it only costs three if you play it over top of the one that you already have out. Hold it right there, Mario. I've been waiting for you. Oh, I remember this guy. I told you I'd be back. Now get my revenge. Here it comes, baby. Let's check this out. Oh, oh, oh. 
He's back. Mario, I'm talking to you. I promise you this fight will be much different from before. Uh, who is this crazed guy? What a nut. Shut up! Yo, Mario! Of course you remember me. Nah. What? Damn it, you don't remember me? Listen, you. You big lug. My name is Junior Trooper. Remember it and tremble. After this beating, you'll definitely remember it. Um, but yeah, so the shift cards, it's basically just you can play it for cheaper. And the main benefit is A, play it for cheaper, and B, you don't have to wait for it to dry. Because like most uh, TCGs, you can't do anything with the card the turn you summon it. So, uh, that's called drying. The ink is drying, right? But if you do the shift, that's that character changing into a different version of itself. So you don't have to wait for it to dry, you can just immediately use it. So if you have like four of the cheap queen and one or two of the expensive shift queen, then it makes sense because you can get one of those cheap queens out and use it to shift on the next turn. Get ready to hurt Mario. I'm gonna show you a new skill I just picked up. <sighs> yeah, check that out. You never seen anything like it before, have you? Your attacks are useless now. Hmm. I suppose. What if I do this, though? Ouch! Who knew that Mario had such battle skills? It's not over yet, though. Yeah! I would say, yeah. I would say the TCGs... The basics of magic are very easy to pick up. All of the extraneous rules that they've made in the last, like, 30 plus years... I believe, yeah, like, 31 years right now. Um... Those are, like, you know, those have gotten confusing, but the, like, base rules are very, very simple to grasp. And it's like that was the first TCG, so it's useful to know just because, like, most TCGs are going to borrow some element of it. But yeah, it's similar to that. It's like summoning sickness. They're sick. They can't they can't go yet. Whereas the uh, in Lorcana, they're just like, these aren't really the characters. They're glimmers, they call them. So they're basically just like ink constructs. So you're basically like, to get your mana you are melting down a character into ink and using that ink to make the new character, but they need a turn to dry, unless they have Rush, but then they can only attack. They can't do anything else. Um, yeah, I would say Lorcana would be an okay one to get into. It's easy to get a starter deck if you go to a hobby shop. Um, whoop. Right? Yeah, it's a little spooky. Um, yeah, it's easy enough to get a starter deck, and a start each starter deck comes with a pack. So that gets you 72 cards right off the bat. We'll mix and match. And if you're going to a hobby shop that sells it, they probably have uh, a bunch of commons and uncommons from the first couple sets for like, you know, a dime a piece. Very f affordable. I've gotten like a bunch to really build up my collection fast and they've, it's been super cheap. And even like the rares and higher aren't very expensive. The Enchanteds are worth like a hundred plus dollars. Like the El Enchanted Elsa is like over $800. I have an Enchanted uh, Sisu from Ryan the Last Dragon. And that is worth over a hundred bucks, but I'm not gonna sell it cause like, you know, it's kind of fun to be able to say like, I have an Enchanted. Uh, okay. Um, but yeah, right now it's super early, so it's pretty simple. They've added like one or two rules each set so far, but it's still very simple. From what I've heard, these first three sets, this third one having come out today, are, and it's only come out at the hobby shops. It doesn't go to like Walmarts and Targets until the 8th. It, the hobby shops get it early. Yeah, Raya's included, and Raya's, like, a lot of it. 
Mario. Who said that? Oh, Mario. Mario, Mario. Speed Twig, remember me? Hello. I heard you saved the honorable star spirit who was captured by Koopa Bros. Bowser and gay are so angry about it. I know you could do it, Mario. You're on your way. But enough celebration for now. I come bearing important information for you. It seems that one of the star spirits is being held captive somewhere in Dry Dry Desert. Bowser wrote in his diary. Some place called Dry Dry Ruins? The princess braved the dangers of the castle to get you this clue, Mario. If you found anything else, I'll hurry back to tell you. I have to go back to her highness now. She's so brave. I hope this news helps. Yeah, Raya was actually on the packs in this last set. So, pretty, pretty Im important character so far. Nothing from uh, Wish yet. And no Pixar or Marvel or Star Wars or anything. Especially because Star Wars has its own separate thing at the moment. Um, but they're introducing things. I'm The thing I want is the gargoyles from the show to come in. And, and I mean, it's fully Disney-owned property, so I don't see why not, you know? Uh, okay, what do I... Right, Dry Dry says it. Hey, Misty, my day's open as ship. Do you want to take a look? It's really cool. It's a bad ship for beiges. Come on, check it out. Yeah, sure. We got lots of red beiges. Take a very close look. Okay. Ooh, that's good. Here we go. Yeah, that one's great because it means that if I could kill them with a first strike, then they're just... I don't even start the battle animation. So that one is essential. Um, More important than that. Yeah, I mean, I've been hearing mixed things, because anytime I tell someone who's into Lorcana, which is a lot of Disney adults, um, I haven't seen Raya. It's like one of the only Disney movies I haven't seen. Uh, they're just like, it's, it's like half and half. Some are like, yeah, that's probably for the best. And then some of them are like, oh, it's a really good one. I'm like, hmm, I wonder. Um... I believe there was a secret panel somewhere in here. No, maybe it's not this one. Toad with hair. What do you got? Doesn't something smell good? Thanks, Dee lives in this house. She's an incredibly good cook. She just taught me the recipe for delicious fried shroom. You make it with a mushroom. Tell me if I keep practicing, maybe I'll become a master chef. Oh my goodness, it's Mario. My name is Tasty. I love to cook. If you bring me ingredients, I'd be happy to fix you one of my energy-giving dishes. Would you like me to cook you something? Yes. Mushroom. And I shall cook with mushroom. I'll whip something special up just for you, honey. It'll be fabulous. Just a moment. I mean, uh, yeah, Raya just looked like a DreamWorks situation, so I wasn't that interested. Here you are. This recipe's not too bad. Here, please. Ooh, that's pretty good. I will just do that with all my shrooms, then. That is how you spell it, I'm pretty sure. Well, it might be A-W-K-U-A. I think it's... I think you got it right. Uh, that's, yeah, that's fair. I think she's okay for some characters, but she has a very distinct voice, so I don't know. Speaking of movies, um, a new Borderlands trailer? I'm optimistic. I think that Kevin Hart as Roland is a weird choice. Spicy soup.
Yeah, totally. That's the thing is I tr I try not to say that, but I can't deny that I'm the same way. If I hear a recognizable voice, I'm just like, oh, it's that guy. The problem is because I study so many voice actors, I'll be listening to a, a v character and I'm like, oh, that's Rob Paulson. And I'm just like, kind of just thinking about like, hmm, he's doing like this and that for his voice. Interesting. And just go into analytical mode rather than just enjoying them as a character, you know? Um... But yeah, I'd say Lorcana is worth checking out at this point because it's still pretty early on and you can get a decent amount of stuff for a decent price. Um, I think I'm good on cooking. Totally. Totally, yeah. Uh... Also, if you have Nintendo Switch Online, um, oh, hello. Uh, oh, hello there. My name is Babulba. I came from flower fields and went for land of flowers. I love to spread the wondrous flowers of flower fields all over your land. You like flowers, don't you? Of course you do. Who doesn't? For that reason, I'll entrust this to your car. This is, that is a flower seed. It's well cared for, a beautiful flower will bloom. These flowers are delicate. Only one with a love and heart can make them bloom in beauty. Please take good care of it, for beauty is fragile. Uh, but if you have Nintendo Switch Online, you can... Ooh, let's do here. You can play the Pokemon trading card game. Uh, Game Boy... Color, I think it was? Game Boy Color game? Which has a great interactive tutorial and is just like basically a Pokemon game without the routes uh, for the trading card game instead. So you have gym leaders, you have the fights leading up to gym leaders, and you just play the trading card game and yeah, you learn the basics. I mean, the, you know, it's was made when I think there was still just like the first few sets so it's not as a uh, it's not going to cover all of the new stuff but I don't think the Pokemon TCG has changed that much since then in terms of like like they've added types obviously and they've added energies and stuff and uh, they've added new cards but I think the basic Mechanics are all the same. Yeah. It's weird that they haven't put any of the Pokemons on yet. Maybe it's some kind of licensing thing with Game Freak. I'd even go for, like, the, the side games. Like, more of the side games. Like, your... Oh, what? Like, uh, Pokemon... Uh... Pokemon Pinball would be great. I'd really appreciate Pokemon Pinball. Ooh, got that Super Shroom! What's the Super Shroom do? Oh, 10 HP, that's it? Well, it's better than regular Shroom, so... Or wait, uh... Oh, actually, let's do it like this. No, that's not. It. I'm trying to use it. Ah, damn it! I keep trying to use the D-pad, but that's not a thing in this game. No. No! Damn it! Ah! I hold on. Oh, they don't have a rewind in this one. Crap. Well. That sucks. Oh, well. It was... Super Shrooms are going to be pretty plentiful soon enough. So, it's not really that big a deal. Woo! 
they hit hard. Nice. Oh boy. Yeah, not feeling super good. Both of my roommates were sick um, recently, and well, they had like horrible coughs and were like bedridden. I'm not feeling that, but I am feeling kind of croaky, so I think I got some s milder version of what they have had. I think I'll be okay though. Oh, sweet, we leveled up. Um, badge points would be good. Yeah, let's go badge points. Mm, let's give her the dizzy doll. And let's add some badges. Let's use refund. Ow. Couldn't get by it, but I'm as thin as paper. Oh yeah, I've been really enjoying Lorcana. It's just like, blooper. Oh yeah, blooper fight. I've been really enjoying Lorcana. It's a uh, pretty fun game. I, I, it's, it reminds me a lot of, uh, a lot of deck building games that I've played. Especially with the, like, you know, you gotta, uh, commit a card to be resources instead of a card. So that's, that's pretty neat. I'm a fan of that. Come on now. Pow pow. Actually, let's tattle since we got this guy out. Uh, although you have to wonder how they float in the air like that. You know, that's a good question. It's also, it's exciting to be in on a TCG at this early stage when people are just so stoked on it. It's like it's selling out a lot, but it's also like, it's, it's just fun. It's also, I got into it, I think I said this, I got into it because my brother was like, you know, why don't you just get into Magic the Gathering if that's all anybody's playing in town? Because you got, you got live, live tabletop action every week you could be making friends and I was like at first I was like eh, I don't know but the more I thought about it I was like yeah and I was like I'll get into magic but then magic all they were playing was commander which is like confusing and it's like the fantasy like high fantasy stuff which I'm just so tired of um, but then I saw they had Lorcana decks, and I was like, hey, I like Disney, and I have been hearing that it's super popular. I missed my one chance to get packs. I saw them at the Walmart one time, and I was like, maybe I'll get those later, and I didn't. Um, yeah, it's very... It's pretty, pretty cool. I made a lot of friends, hanging out, a lot of regulars at the Lorcana tournament each week. It was like a Lorcana league thing. Um, and there is a board game night, so I've been playing lots of board games with people. So far, I'm three for three on people liking the board games I've brought, um, which was a uh, roll camera. People liked that, and, or no, I guess it's two for two, because they've only played that, and Scout, which we played twice. But they loved Scout so much that they went to uh, the owner of the store, and they were like, can you order more of these for us? We all want to get a copy. I was like, heck yeah, I love Scout. It's one of my favorites. 
Plus, I gotta get, I, I can introduce someone to Root, who's gonna be in a Root role-playing game thing, which, that, I never actually made the announcement. I am going to do, on the stream, I'm going to do a digital version of a Root RPG campaign. And I'm also gonna do one at the store, which will just be, you know, not on stream. Uh, they'll be kind of parallel, because I'm just gonna use the same map more or less, but they won't be identical, right? Because they'll be different characters doing different stuff, affecting the world in different ways. Um, so yeah, that's gonna happen at some point. I planned to do it in January, but then I got kind of swamped with stuff and depressed, but I'm gonna get it set up soon. Um, but yeah, I've been feeling pretty good. That's going to be fun. Uh, but yeah, Root, the regular board game. Uh, she hadn't even heard of it. And it's one of my favorites, so I'm going to bring that next time I go. I'm debating how much I should bring. Because we're... Oh yeah, got a... Got a seed. Oh, yeah. I've done this with Minty. Got a magical seed for you, baby. Oh, you'll give me the seed? Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'll plant it right away. Okay, thanks. Um. Oh, this is a little guy. Uh. So yeah, excited to get an opportunity to play that with some fresh eyes. I have every expansion, and I haven't gotten to play with a bunch of them, but it's also like, I think I'll just bring the base game, and we'll go from there. Oh, okay. That's, that's neat. Good to find a place for my stats. What's this? Oh yeah, the oinks. Right, this is something I'm gonna need to do for 100%. I love little oinks, love them! You, you wanna learn about them? Well, oinks are timid and mysterious creatures that hatch from eggs. They spook easily and run away if you approach them. Observe them from out there. There are many breeds of little oinks. They're very easy to tell apart. White ones, black ones, even gold and silver ones. If you're curious about the breed of a newborn little oink, come over to talk to me. Wish the world were full of little oinks. That would be grand. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, it's a solid game, even without the expansions. And the expansions mostly just add new factions. And no matter which set I bring, each faction, it's asymmetrical. So each faction has totally different, um, has pretty different rules. But, yeah, you know, I'll just bring the base one. That should be fine. And I gotta bring tiny epic dinosaurs because last time there were people saying they really wanted to play it. And it's one of my favorites, so why not? And probably some more Oink games because they really loved Scout. And, uh, yeah, a lot of other Oink games are very good too. Just always bopping for secrets. Hmm. I don't trust those guys. Some up with them. Well, let's go around. Uh, dry, dry desert. Yep. Up in there. Hey, how about that? I see. Yeah, 
Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Noah, oh, Barrio back there. Scout is a abstract card game. So there's there's a theme that's like carnivals or something, but it's really it's really unimportant because the gameplay has nothing to do with the theme. Um, it's just numbers. Ba boom. There we go. Train's back on track. Here we go. Uh, but basically, it's a deck of cards, which are double-sided, so... Base, or not double-sided, but double-ended, so... One... The top will be one number, the bottom will be a different number. Um, and they can be one through ten. And you take out, like, a bunch of the tens if you're playing with less players. Basically, you deal out the whole deck to everybody... Then, when they pick up their hand, they're not allowed to rearrange it. On your turn, you show by putting down a, a group of cards that were next to each other in your hand. That's why you can't rearrange. They have to already be next to each other. Which, they can either be the same number, or they can be uh, a series in a row, like 2, 3, 4. Or they could be backwards, 4, 3, 2. As long as it's not like 2, 4, 3, right? You can't just jumble. You It's got to be going the correct way in either direction. And then the next person has to play something that's either more cards. Uh, if they're the same cards versus cards in order, the same cards will beat the cards that are in order, if it's the same amount of cards. And then the next thing would be value. So if it's the same amount of cards and they're both, you know, in a row or the same, then you would check which is the higher number. Um, then wh whoever you beat, you take their cards, flip them upside down, the backs are like dollars, and so each one is now a point for you, and so then you just keep going around until either somebody runs out of cards in their hand, or you scout, so if you can't beat what somebody played, you scout, which is you take one of the cards from the ends of the side that they played, and you can put it in your hand wherever you like, and you can flip it around to like rearrange your hand basically that's the only way that you can rearrange your hand by adding a new card in but if every if it gets back around to the person who put the thing down and all anybody could do is scout then the round also ends and you add up the points you got minus the cards in your hand unless you ended the round in which case you ignore the cards in your hand you play one round per uh per player and you like shift you know the who's who's the dealer, basically, every turn. Um, I think I already saved. And you... Uh, and the only other thing is you have a... You can scout and show. So you scout a card and then immediately show to beat whatever is left. Uh, you can do that one time per round, and you have a token that you flip over to show that you did it. Egg... Hello? I saw a creature called a wacker. Mount Rugged. It was extra cute. But yeah, it's just like a, a pretty straightforward classic kind of card game. It's It takes some time to get your head around, but after you've played like a couple rounds, it's just, it's so fun. It's so fun. Um... Ah, no, confound it. Where could it be? Oh, it's this guy. Uh, actually, I'm going to give him the voice of... Oh, sorry, folks. Very sorry. I was looking for something and not watching where I was going. What now? Aren't you Mario? Why, you are. You're the Mario. Well, hello there. The name's Barricary. I deliver letters. Um, I'm normally a letter-perfect postman, but I'm having a bit of trouble with a lost letter. Wouldn't you know it? I dropped it on Mount Rugged, and now I can't find it. If you happen to stumble upon a letter anywhere around here, please tell me, all right? My job could depend on it. I'll be searching this area thoroughly for a while. Yeah, that's the thing, is describing it, it doesn't make sense, but when you have the cards in front of you, it's, it's really not that complicated. But, super fun. Love that game. Love, love, love that game. 
Um, See, so yeah, I gotta do tiny epic dinosaurs and I gotta do root. Those are the ones that have been requested. Very excited to do both of those. Love those games. Probably, yeah, I'll bring some of those. Ooh, I should bring Union Station. Yeah, Union Station is a game about building up the Chicago train network. And it's about, it's, it's technically about that, but it's really about investing in stocks of that network. What's up? Wahoo, I'm Wagga. Just another picture-perfect day atop Mount Rover. Woo! The sunshine, the fresh air, so refreshing. Wackadoo. You gotta wag him. Wah! Don't hit me! I need your bump, dude. I need your freaking bump. Whoops. Uh. Let me just use the mushroom. Grab that bump! Looks like a melon pod. Ah. Yeah, we played last night. Um, I was there already because I'm gonna be joining a cyberpunk red group. And I wanted to, I basically just like, I didn't know what kind of character to make. So I kind of just watched them play see what the story is like, what kind of tone they're playing with. Uh, and so now I have a better idea of what character I'm going to play the next time they meet, which will probably be in a couple weeks or something. We'll see. Uh, but then, one of the people there, uh, her birthday was recently, before I met her. Um, but... She got Horrified Greek Monsters, which is a co-op game. The original one is like the Universal Monsters, so like Dracula, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Frankenstein's Monster, etc. Uh, and then they made American Monsters, which is like Mothman and Bigfoot, the Chupacabra. Um, and now this one was Greek Monsters, and it was pretty tough. We were trying to stop the Basilisk. And the, uh, and Cer Cerberus. And we failed. It was pretty, pretty tough. But I'm excited to play more of that, too. That's a fun game. Uh, I also got a chance to play Puerto Rico in person. And I won, because I played so much Puerto Rico. But that game, so much fun. Ah, if you haven't played Puerto Rico, it's a classic. That one's also straightforward. It's basically, you are, you're colonizing Puerto Rico. There's way too many board games where the plot is, you're colonizing this place. But, um, it's pretty, pretty simple. There's a bunch of different actions you can do. Uh, like ship all your goods or trade your goods for other stuff or build a new building and uh, One player takes one of those actions and they get a bonus and then everybody else takes that same action in order Without the bonus and then the next player picks it and they get the bonus and everybody else takes the action So whatever you pick everybody's gonna get to do but you get like an advantage and then the ones that don't get picked, um, the ones that don't get picked get a a uh, single doubloon on them. So next round it's like, ooh, the doubloons, you know. And if nobody's picked this particular action for a couple rounds, it's like, well, now it's got two doubloons on it that I get. So maybe I'll just get it for the money, even if I don't really need to do that action. And it just keeps going until uh, you run out of victory point chips, or somebody does, builds all the buildings they can. Um, gotta heal up. 
Do I get anything cheaper? No. Let's do this instead. Yeah, it gets complicated. The part that gets complicated is uh, the buildings because there's a lot of different buildings and those are what kind of determine whether you're gonna win or not, but they're not that bad. You know, it, it took a while to uh, remember most of them, but they're, it's, it's pretty, pretty obvious how they work. Ooh, Cooper. Bow, gotcha. Yeah, the main thing is if you get into Puerto Rico, uh, the factory, which costs seven doubloons, is actually a mistake. Or not so much a mistake, but uh, the designer has said afterwards on Board Game Geek that if he could have changed anything about the game, he would have switched the price of that and the university, which is eight doubloons. Because, um, so you can just play it that way if you want it to be fair, but... Yeah, the, um, the, if you want to win, you get that factory, because it's pretty affordable. And there's only two, so, you know, and you got to play with at least three, so somebody ain't getting that factory. This is the part where the game gets kind of tough. Those rock guys, I remember being pretty, pretty brutal. But you gotta fight everybody that you can in this game. Otherwise, you know, you're gonna end up underleveled. And at a certain point, you kinda gotta grind. I try not to, but, you know. If I'm close to a level up. Because the thing... Yeah, the thing with, uh... Boop, boop, boop. Oh, I didn't hit him at all. Huh. Oh. Huh. Because the thing with this is that it's always a hundred star points for a level, but it just, like, as you get stronger, you just, the enemies give you less star points. And at a certain point, like Goombas and Koopas, the basic enemies, stop giving you star points altogether. They're just, like, a waste of time. What am I supposed to do about this guy? Can Bombette do it? Okay, okay, we need Bombette. That makes sense. They are rocks. Boink. Boom. I'll just drink a honey syrup so Bombat's got some more foop. Some more foop. Uh, Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, on the other hand, that one's pretty simple. It's just a worker placement tableau creation game. So you basically, there's a phase where you just put down a guy to be like, I'm gonna do this action. Then if anybody else wants to do that action, they have to put down you know, one more guy than you did, right? Um, so you're claiming it, and, uh, what was it, um, whoa, can I, I don't think I can, oh, you know what, I should switch to a stronger hammer badge, I think. Uh, smash charge? Sure. Uh, but that what it's like you just do that to do the actions, you're getting dinosaurs and stuff to do a, uh, create a dinosaur ranch and sell the dinos to sell the dinos 
for different contracts. And once you do your actions, you just put together your ranch to make sure that the dinos are all contained safely. And uh, yeah, whoever gets the, sells the most dinos gets the most points and wins. And it's very small is the, uh, is the big thing. Union Station is also like that. It's a very small game. Which I always love a small game. Physically, quite diminutive. Um, and we're gonna do another one of those. And we're gonna do a syrup. Cranking through the items, but you kinda got in this area. I think, yeah, this is where you drop through and get that little bonus. The stair pieces. Which you trade for badges, but I do gotta get all of them to 100%. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's the thing is I keep forgetting to zip because I'm like... It's less convenient on this controller. Oh no! Oh jeez, and he hit pretty hard. should save the hammer charge. Yeah, it feels like it's kind of wasteful. Because I definitely need to be able to do her bomb for the, uh... Are they clungs? Clergs? Something? Watch out! Nice. Mantle Mole situation. Ba boom. Nice. And jump. Mm, crump. Yeah, this area it's just kind of like roaming through the desert, picking up stuff. So, just kind of going through the motions with this one. Oh, that sucks. Well, we'll just fire flower. I'm pretty sure that'll hit them both. Because, yeah, I can't hit the guy in the back. Um. Ah, dip. I can jump on the guy in the back, but that would hurt me because he's spiky. Uh, yeah, let's do that. I think it's weird that they do that with the items because, like, Mario's the only one you can do an item on, so I... Why are they, are they like, which guy? The one guy. There's only one guy that can do it. You goof. Whoa. There's a tunnel up there. Right. That leads to that chest. Bubble. Damage dodge. I might be able to do... Oh, 
Oof. Yeah, it's better than those. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Ah, dang it. Well. Uh, yep. Nice, up to 90. Nearly leveling up again. We're cranking through it. Baboosh. Also, any of the stuff I'm skipping is stuff that I'll be able to get. Uh, is stuff that I can't really get to later. Until I get paracarry. One thing I really like about this, this and Thousand Year Door, is that all of the companions, aside from the Yoshi in the next one, uh. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Um, uh, they're all like enemies usually, but they're like a nice guy this time around, so that's fun. They're hanging out, they're being buds. The second one, it's like a lot more like new creatures, but they're like generally like. You know, Mario wouldn't normally trust him, but in this case, he trusts. All right. Moving on up. Moving on across. And a little down. Got the letter. That's the letter from Colorado, huh? So that's two, I think there's four letters? Maybe five? Back at the beginning of the area. Where are those other le I'm pretty sure I just gotta move on forward. Oh, and I, nothing's respawning yet. I'm not sure how far you have to go for it to respawn, but I don't hate that because, you know, yeah, these enemies are pretty tough. You know what I watched recently was Highlander. That movie is awesome, and I understand why it's iconic, but wow, does it look cheap. Oh my god. God, it's the cheapest movie ever. Like, it's shot on tape, so it looks like it's a TV show. And, like, the... I don't know. It's just very silly, but it's, like... It's so fun. It's hard to, to describe, but it's just, like, they do stuff that's so cool. Like, the, the, the ending. Oh, my God. And also, the villain is uh, Clancy Brown, who played, who plays Mr. Krabs on uh, Spongebob. And he's, it's awesome. I mean, he got that because he's like a friggin' seven foot tall giant. So, it's, it was the right choice. It's got Sean Connery. It's got Christopher Lambert, who literally, when they cast him, did not speak any English. And you can tell. His accent is very thick. But you know what? He did his best. He's a good actor, so it still worked out pretty good, I think. Ah, I mean, Sean Connery apparently did take dialect coaching to try and learn a Spanish accent. Give me that. Give me that bump. Bump a whack. Uh. He still just sounds like Sean Connery, though. So, you know, do the best with what you can. I would recommend everybody watch the first Highlander. Uh, the second Highlander, mm, I haven't seen it. 
I heard it's bad, but maybe, I mean, watching the first one, I'm like, that was pretty goofy. So, maybe the sequel is also as enjoyable if you're not so, you know, up your own butt about it. Oh, okay, there were only three letters. Good. Uh, actually, I haven't just uh, left. I may have sort of dropped some all over the Mushroom Kingdom while I was flying. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you're good at finding letters. Do you think you could keep an eye out during your travels? In return, I would offer you whatever help I can. Oh, praise the stars. I was looking forward to having to find those letters all by myself. No, sir. I'll do my very best to help. You shall not regret this. Barricary joined. So now we can do a bunch more stuff. Now, onward! Oh, but hey, by the way, if you want to deliver a letter to someone, just speak to that person. It would be next year at the time for it to work, though, so keep that in mind, alright? Yeah, I mean, the first one was very... That's the thing, is, like, I kind of understand why they did, uh, tried to do a franchise. Because it's, it's like a guy throughout history, right? And there's other immortals, so it's like, it makes sense. But you'd kind of have to do prequels, because, yeah, the first movie is the end of the story. But... I would say watch it, man. It's like... It's such a strange movie. Like, even just read the Wikipedia and hear all the bizarre stuff. Like, they were like, we're just not gonna feed the extras. Or like how the, the swords would spark when they hit each other. And they did that by connecting them to jumper cables connected to an actual car battery. So if they touched the blade, they'd be electrocuted. It was absurd. And a lot of those fights with those swords, they were like, in a lot of water. There was a lot of water stuff in that movie. It was strange. It very much feels like a, like a 90s graphic novel, if that makes sense. It's hard to describe, but when you watch it, it's like... It very much feels like something like... Um, like Rob Liefeld would make. Something from Image Comics, you know? Like a, a Frank Miller kind of thing, maybe? It's very particular. But I think... You, one, specifically, would get what I mean with that. But yeah, that first one, it's very goofy, but in a super enjoyable way that's just, like, is really awesome. So, I would really recommend the first one. I haven't seen the sequels. I've heard they're not very good. So, I won't stake a claim on that, but you should, uh, you should watch that first one. I d highly recommend the first one. Barrow. It is also garg. It, it's a very similar vibe to gargoyles, but gargoyles, I would say, is a little more like prestige. Like I think I do have to have the caveat recommending Highlander. I'd say like everyone should watch it. It's so entertaining, but it is kind of silly. Whereas gargoyles, I would say like everybody should watch it. It's just very good. You know, but it's a similar tone. Whoop! Ow! Woo -woo -woo -woo. Yes! Yeah, you should 100% watch Gargoyles. It's incredible. It's so good. I, I would say the first season is certainly very strong. Uh, I kind of fell off in the second season because there's, like, a whole arc in the middle that kind of drags. And then there's, like, the Goliath Chronicles that's, like, a, a spin-off that I hear is terrible, but I have not seen. Yeah, I would say it's, uh, Power Rangers is a great example. It's, like... It's like if Power Rangers was uh, more aimed at adults, but Highlander has a very similar feel to those. 
to Power Rangers. Yeah, unfortunately. It's, yeah. I, I, I love the first season, and the animation in the first season is absolutely gorgeous. Um, the second season was also very good, but it's like, yeah, it starts to drag. It gets kind of, like, bogged down in a lot of lore stuff. Like, there's a huge portion of it where Goliath um, is just kind of, like, off doing his own thing, trying to get back to the uh, other gargoyles, and it's... It's not as good. It's much better as an ensemble. Though you do get a lot of stuff about the other guys trying to lead, and that's interesting. Bots. So annoying. Although, I feel like they've gotten a little better. Not by much, though. Oof, yeah. Doesn't even have a TV Tropes page. That says a lot. You know what? Before that happens, I am I really gotta grab my dinner, so I will be back in just a minute. So don't go anywhere. Don't touch the internet dial. I'm taking a quick break. We'll be our back in just a minute.
Okay, I'm back. I got a big plate of curry rice. Uh, let's keep playing. What? Oh, I got hit. That's unfortunate. Oh, I should have uh, switched, guys. Well, it's got to be her. She's the only one that can deal with these fellas. Hmm. That's hot. Hot plate of curry rice. Ooh, let's go. Butter slam. Or a bomb. You got him. No! Ah, they disappear so fast. Playing one handed while I eat. Which is not advised, ladies and gents. Not advised in the slight. Oh, what the. Barrack Harry! Take me across the entire gap, bro. I might cut the stream kind of short. I'm not feeling great. Feeling a little grody, but. I wanted to stream at least a little. Well, that was a taxi driver reference. How about that? And got him. Easy. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for watching. I do really enjoy streaming. It's just like, if I can't stream for at least like a couple hours, you know, ideally. Ideally. Uh, four or more hours. Then I'm just like, yeah. Plus, if I'm not feeling great in general, it's just like, the stream's not gonna be very good, so. Probably better to rush at that point. It's how I treat workouts as well. It's like, if I feel so tired and don't want to work out, it's like, well, it's probably better for my body in general just to rest then. It's been working out okay. I'm in pretty good shape still. I'm not stressed about it. My birthday's coming up. That's going to be fun. I think, uh, what Twitch considers my stream anniversary already happened. What I consider my stream anniversary, as in the day I first started streaming, is just a little bit away. I believe. So I might do a stream on that day. But, you know. Depends on what day it falls on. Because I got a lot of stuff going on now. I like go out of the house and do stuff. Go to a variety of gaming events. of a community. Feels good. That was my, uh, 
New Year's resolution in general was just be part of a community, and it's like, I don't know, being part of the Twitch community, I try to, it's like, I'd hang out with people, people would be stoked when I would raid them, and they would seem to be pretty happy to see me. But nobody would collab with me when I would ask them, it, it just wouldn't happen. And nobody ever raids me. Oh. Not really part of the community, I guess. I tried. It just didn't happen. Frankly, I mean, I've said this before, but it's like... It feels like streaming nowadays is trying to funnel you into being a very particular type of streamer. And it's... I just don't want to be that. I want to stream how I'm going to stream, and if that's not the specific style that becomes successful, then oh well, I guess. I'll just do it for fun. Maybe it's the persona that I portray online, which seems to end up being very negative. Which is very odd, because in person, I'm a very positive person. Like, when I'm out at events and stuff, I'm like all smiles, having a great time, super supportive. Very friendly, but yeah. Something about interacting online just really turns me into a curmudgeon. I don't know what that's about. Whoop. Ah, dang it. Whoop. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate it. Anybody who lurks, you know. Very much appreciated. Like, if there's anybody who just... I know for a fact... Egan, who's been on the stream before, will often uh, watch in and, you know, put it on while doing homework. So, if that's how you want to engage with the stream, sweet. I'm glad that I'm bringing entertainment into your world. That's all I really want. I don't ask of, you know, it'd be cool if people subscribed and interact in chat, but if they don't want to, fine. Like, genuinely, I'm, I'm just glad that they're watching. I'm mostly just doing this as an excuse to play video games. You know? Because it's like, I can perform in a way, a very relaxed form of performance. And, uh, play games, which I normally don't really have the time for. Let's change to Bombet. And a bomb. A bomb. I don't know, I feel like I'm probably repeating myself a lot, but like, the kind of streaming I want to do, more or less, is what streaming was in the early days, when it was just like a lot of like computer nerds who figured out how to stream, because it used to be very difficult prior to OBS and stuff. And so they, they had the technical know-how to do it, and so they did it. And it was just playing games and goofing around. It was chill. Nowadays, it's like all about, you know, trying to build your brand and... And get sponsorships and, you know, get all, all these things from people. It's all about getting stuff from people. 
Whoops. Well, it wasn't going to do anything anyways. Nice, nice. I think. Yeah, I gotta run away. I was like, that's just not what I want to do. I don't feel comfortable asking people to s support the stream because in, in reality, in the world we live in, this is like such low effort entertainment to begin with. And times are so tough financially for people. So it's like, I don't think it's correct for me to be like, pay for me to do this stuff. All I really want is attention, and if you are viewing it, then that you are providing that, so you have already completed the transaction as far as I'm concerned. Anything else that is added on top is just gravy. Sir. Hey there, hold up a sec, partner. Just, oh wait, just a darn minute, I've seen you somewhere. Yep, very similar. You look a lot like this fella Mario's on Bowser's Wanted poster. Now, Gib, what's your name? Luigi. Oh, well, Luigi Apart. You do look like this dude. Well, you're not Mario, I guess. I reckon you can pass. Well, thanks. Right neighborly of you. Always find this area frustrating. A, because it's just desert. Desert's boring as a setting. B, it encourages you to use paracarry for traversal, but then you gotta use bombette for all of the the rock guys. So it's like it's really splitting. And I get why because you just got bombette and they want to use both, but it's like it's pretty annoying. Uh, to get to the desert town, dry, dry outpost, just go due east on this path. I'd be careful not to stray from the path if I were you. You may find some trouble. You'll definitely get lost. Even the path isn't that safe, so watch out for enemies. We're assisting Professor Colorado. Right now we're waiting on the guy who hiked over to dry, dry outpost to try to bring back some information. Do you know the people of dry, dry outpost are descendants of the makers of dry, dry ruins? What a cool thought, huh? People have been living here, watching over the ruins for many generations. Well, hello there, old boy. How goes the travels, eh? I'm known as Colorado. I'm an archaeologist, you know. I travel the world. At the moment, I'm turning dry, dry desert upside down to find the dry, dry ruins. My assistants have attempted to gather information in dry, dry outpost, which is near here. Sadly, as of yet, we're having a little, we're having little success. All I need is a clue, and we'll be golden. You're Colorado, correct? The name's Paracarry. I deliver letters. I believe I have one for you. Hang on a moment. Yeah. 
no good show. It's a letter from my wife. Thank you ever so, old chap. This is just what I needed to give my me strength to go on. I know. I'll pass this along as a spot of thanks. I came across it while I was immersed in the dig around here. Oh, nice. Right, we're just gonna go straight for Dry Dry Outpost. And I think I'll call it there. I know it's a very short stream, but I'm just... Yeah, I'm feeling, feeling not so great. Eating is helping a bit, but... Yeah, I feel like I need to hang out and chill for a bit. Oh, hello. And here we are. Oh, let me drop off my whack bumps. I don't need them for a while still. Hmm. What's that guy up to? Temporarily closed. Ah, nuts. Well, let's... Hold on. Is there a toad house? I should toad house. There's a pipe. I need to get that for later. There's the toad house. I do plan to stream more often. Well, not more often, but, you know, weekly and do it uh, regularly. And, uh, yeah, for longer. From, you know, five to nine, that's always the plan, but lately I've just been getting up late and not been feeling up to it, so we'll see how it goes. But thanks everybody for watching. Um, if you would, take the time to follow, you know, subscribe if you'd be so kind, and check out the Discord. Set it up pretty nice. Go have some fun, tons of places to share whatever you like, including stuff you've done. Self-promotion is totally encouraged. So we are going to raid over to somebody. Let's see who's out there for raiding. Speaking of... Being a character played by Christopher Lambert, Raiden from Mortal Kombat. Um, or no, I want to go to watch. Who's live? Ah, vocal butcher, sure. Let's raid over to Vocal Butcher. See what he's up to. Quiet, quiet, quiet. The Vocal Butcher. Chat. Let's see if it'll actually let me do it. From OBS. Yes, it will, sweet. All right. Let the vocal butcher know I sent you. Have a great weekend. I'll see y'all next Friday. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. A goodbye.